This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. The last part of the chapter is just going to go through there and look at the disclosures. Now, we talk about here hedge accounting and disclosures. It's technically not really hedge accounting disclosures. It's more disclosures to do with financial instruments in general. So disclosures about financial assets, disclosures about financial liabilities. And the reason why it is there as a new standard, so the IFRS 7, is effectively because of the banking crisis, uh, the financial crisis that took hold of the global economy uh, at the back part of 2007 and going into, is it 2008, when it really gripped uh, the world, so to speak, didn't it? Okay. And a lot of the, the reason behind it was obviously uh, the risks that were taken by large financial institutions in terms of the level of borrowing uh, that they allowed uh, to, to maybe not so credit worthy individuals. And because of that, they were then a little bit less liquid th than what they should have been. And then following that, the market took quite a bit of a hit, didn't it, in terms of uh, share prices, uh, bond markets, uh, and the likes. Okay, and, and one of the issues that was thrown at the world of accountancy was, well, hang on a minute, you, you've got all your accounting, which is complex enough. Okay, and you know we've, we've tried to simplify it from having looked at the last few videos on hedging. It's not that simple, is it? Uh, but from the world of financial instruments and financial assets and financial liability, they have tried to make it much more straightforward. Uh, but the big issue there on top of that is you've got a number within your accounts, whether it's a financial asset. So it's an investment that you have in shares, uh, whether that is classified differently from one business to another. Who would know? OK, you've just got a number as an investment. Uh, what happens if you've got a loan within your financial statements? OK, uh, you've borrowed money uh, or maybe you're a bank and you have lent money. Again, you'll see from a bank's perspective, having lent the money, you've got your financial assets. So all those, if you like, mortgage receivables and loan receivables. Or if you are the company that's borrowed the money, you'll have huge amounts of financial liabilities, won't we? Again, you see a number on the financial statements. Do you see anything else? Now you do, because what we have is IFRS 7, and it gives you a lot more disclosure. Think about it as PPE and a disclosure note. We've got financial instruments and a disclosure note, isn't it? You know, for PPE, all you see on the face of the statement of profit or loss is the carrying value of all of your property, plant and equipment. Exactly the same from a financial instruments perspective. You see the sum total of all your financial assets. You see the sum total of all your financial liabilities. But what do those financial liabilities represent? What do those financial assets represent as well? Well, now you've got rules about what you should be disclosing. OK, uh, and the reason why we have it is to go through there and give the shareholders more information so that they can understand the risks that arise from this complex area of accounting, which is financial instruments. You know, if you've got all of these investments in shares, or investments in debt as your financial assets. The issue there is that, well, those investments in shares, what's the risk that those values of the share prices will change? Uh, if you've got the investment in debt, what's the risk that your customer will not be able to pay you? OK, uh, so we start to have disclosures about credit risk. We start to have disclosures about is it market risk, the changes in the price. Credit risk is, is the ability of, of the people who you lent the money to be able to pay you back. If you're looking at it from a financial liability perspective and your, your loans that you've taken out, you may have various different loans that the Treasury Department has entered into. They're all bundled together uh, within the financial statements, but within the notes to the accounts, it, it starts talking about the level of risk in terms of the repayments and therefore your level of liquidity risk. Have you got a, suffic a sufficient budget in place to go through there and to be able to pay back that loan? not just the, the interest, but also the capital repayments as well. OK, so what the standard has done is it's ensured that there isn't just a, a numerical breakdown of all of the financial assets and financial liabilities 
by different categories. So whether that's fair value through profit or loss or all the other various different categories that we have whereby gains and losses may be taken uh, to other comprehensive income or maybe as well there's some form of amortized cost methodology as well okay there are quantitative disclosures that split things out but what the standard has really done is focused upon these qualitative characteristics or qualitative disclosures and by there what we need there is a little bit more description okay and description there revolves around explaining what your exposure to risk is now if you've lent money to your customers how credit worthy are those customers okay uh, clearly if there is a change in the credit worthiness you would need to report that as part of your qualitative disclosures okay you then need to go through there and disclose as well if there have been any changes in your exposure okay why has that arisen okay uh, has there been an increase in liquidity risk Has your trading suffered that therefore has meant uh, you have less cash available to pay off your loans uh, or is there an economic downturn that has meant that a lot of the businesses that you have lent to have been downgraded with regards to their credit ratings okay you can't expect the shareholders to find this out you have to give the information in terms of the disclosures in the notes and then likewise as well one of the important aspects and sort of why it links into hedging that we spoke about earlier is all about how do we manage the risk do we enter into hedging transactions if so what is the exposure that we are protecting ourselves against what's the changes in the instrument what's the changes in the item and, and how has that gone through there and affected the financial statements uh, if you don't hedge why not okay or if you don't do anything to, to manage the change in risk why have you taken that stance okay you can argue that businesses shouldn't be hedging in terms of risk because the shareholders themselves will own a well diversified portfolio of shares and therefore they are managing their own personal risk and it's not up to the directors to manage the risk of that particular business but that's something for, for another day okay so the key thing that you've got here is to note the, the risks that we are trying to give you the disclosure about so the credit risk the liquidity risk and the market risk and then that we have qualitative and quantitative disclosures and the focus is much more now on that qualitative disclosure okay giving more information to the users of the accounts but, but like we've seen in that previous chapter when we started talking about the global reporting initiative and sustainability and integrated reporting into how sustainability can be integrated with all the aspects within the business so so if you like managing risk that we have here all of a sudden we've got a lot going on within those financial statements and it could be argued that we've got too much within there but that's not for us to worry about for now you just need to be happy with the reasons behind IFRS 7 as a standard and what you're expected to include within there as your disclosure. Other than that, that's it from this chapter and that's it for this first part of the syllabus.